Nowadays, gas turbines are widely used in various industries. They might be utilized to power aircrafts, electric generators, trains, ships, and several other cases. Today, we'll focus on aircrafts. In previous videos, we have explained the main mechanism of rocket engines. If you need the review, tap on the link above. The jet propulsion system is almost based on a thermodynamic cycle called the Brighton Cycle, which was proposed by George Brighton in the 19th century. Let us see how it works. First, air is sucked in through a diffuser and it is decelerated while its pressure increases. In the second stage, air enters the compressor where it is compressed almost isentropically. The third process takes place as the fuel is combusted in the combustion chamber and its produced heat is absorbed. However, this process is ideally known as a constant pressure heat addition without the presence of the fuel. Afterwards, the hot high pressure fluids enters the turbine and undergoes an isentropic expansion. The expanded product exits the turbine and passes through a nozzle in which gets accelerated. Finally, the exhaust gases are pushed out with a high velocity. As are pushed out, we assume that these gases come back to the cycle and are recirculated. In the ideal case, we substitute the leaving gases with the losing heat to the surroundings. Well, analyzing the real cycle is a little bit complicated. Thus, we use the idealized model where all devices such as compressor, turbine, diffuser, and nozzle are totally isentropic, and heat transfer takes place isobarically. The main difference between the ideal jet propulsion cycle and the basic Brighton cycle is that the network output of a jet is zero, since the power produced by the turbine is just sufficient to drive the compressor. We have already proven that the thrust developed in the turbojet engine equals to this, where we exit is the exit velocity of the exhaust gases and V inlet is the inlet velocity of the air, which are both relative to the aircraft. We can now define another quantity called the propulsive power, that is the thrust multiplied by the aircraft velocity. Another popular engine used in aircraft industry is the tube of an engine, in which a large fan driven by the turbine forces a considerable amount of air through a duct. In other words, some of the incoming air passes through a fan and the rest enters the compressor. Therefore, a turbofan gets a part of its thrust from the fan. Turbofans are more efficient than the turbojets since they generate more thrust for an equal amount of fuel. The reason behind this is that for the same power, turbofans produce more thrust by accelerating more amount of air. There is also an older engine type called the turboprop that is very similar to turbofan except that it has a propeller. Turboprops use a fraction of the turbine output power to drive a propeller which generates thrust by accelerating air and creating a low pressure differential in front. Turboprops burn less fuel per passenger for the same amount of flying time. This makes them more cost effective compared to turbojets. In addition, Turbojets can work better in higher altitudes due to the fact that turbofans and turboprops get some of their thrust by accelerating cold air and pushing it out at the back of the engine. So as the aircraft gets higher, the thin air cannot produce enough thrust only by being accelerated. This is where turbojets come into notice. Besides their better performance with thin air, they can provide more speed, sometimes even more than supersonic ones, in comparison with turboprops and turbofans. This basically is because of the propeller's rotary speed, which is limited due to the design considerations. Thanks for watching this video. Leave us your questions down below and do not forget to like and subscribe.